Education Week Part 5 of 6. Florida's next major storm was Hurricane Donna in 1960, which struck the Keys and then the mainland. By the end of August 1960, there had been four tropical cyclones, of which three became hurricanes, but then came Hurricane Donna, and it, along with Ethel shortly afterwards, became a powerful Category 5 storm during its lifetime. Whilst the season was ultimately quiet at the end, but with only six storms forming, Donna certainly proved that intensity is often more damaging and quantity, especially here in Marathon, which struck as a Category 4 hurricane. This storm was another one that originated off the coast of Africa and crossed the Atlantic, peaking as a Category 5 storm before striking the Lesser Antilles. Donna continued towards Florida and struck the Keys as a Category 4 storm and maintained its strength as it passed over Naples and then moved towards the northeast. Up to three in four buildings at Marathon were destroyed, with a similar figure of damaged buildings in Fort Myers. In total, there were up to 400 fatalities throughout the storm's long path and $900 million in damages, just short of becoming the first billion dollar hurricane. The next storm followed five years later, Hurricane Betsy, which also struck the very southernmost part of Florida. Hurricane Betsy made landfall in southern Florida as a Category 3 major hurricane and intensity it had since before it struck the Bahamas. The storm made landfall on Key Largo with winds gusting into Category 5 intensity. Along with strong winds came a storm surge that wiped out crops and caused severe flooding on the upper keys. Betsy went on to strike Louisiana and flooded New Orleans. In Louisiana, there were more than $1 billion in damages and $139 million in Florida. In all, the storm killed 81 and was the first billion dollar hurricane. And in 1992, the Florida mainland's only Category 5 landfall, Hurricane Andrew. I'm standing between what's left of two trees that stood before Hurricane Andrew made landfall and this is pretty much exactly where it did make landfall uh, 22 years ago on the Florida mainland after it first crossed Elliot Key a few miles east of here. Um, the hurricane was packing winds in excess of 160 miles per hour as it moved inland uh, just north of Homestead and continued westwards emerging over the Gulf of Mexico still as a severe storm of course before making its final landfall on the Gulf Coast. Not much evidence of Andrew's landfall exists anymore, though I was shown a few places like here, as well as some locations of photographs that were taken just after the storm, to compare with what it looks like today, but more on that in a moment. The first named storm of the 1992 Atlantic hurricane season took its time to form, and it only did so in mid-August, though there were two cyclones that were unnamed before it. Beginning in the central Atlantic, quite far south, what was known as Tropical Depression 3 at first eventually became Hurricane Andrew. The storm intensified and barreled through the Bahamas as a Category 5 hurricane, before weakening slightly and then re-intensifying to strike Florida as a 165 mile per hour storm. It was not far from here where Andrew's highest waves were reported, at up to 17 feet or 5 metres. Uh, whilst accurate wind information isn't available for the point of landfall, it's highly plausible that wind gusts exceeded 180 miles per hour and sustained winds well into Category 5 intensity. 90% um, of mobile homes were uh, damaged here in Miami-Dade County and over 100,000 homes were damaged in total, a fairly incomprehensible amount uh, illustrated by its $25 billion price tag at the time in 1992, so it would be significantly more in 2014 dollars. Um, high winds extended southwards onto the upper keys and some more damage occurred there, but not as severe or widespread um, as to what was witnessed here. Uh, light to moderate damage was also seen on the western coast from Lee County southwards. 44 were killed in Florida State during the passage of the storm. Here's how one road looked after Andrew compared to now. The point where I was talking earlier was at Black Point Marina, shown here on this image after the storm. This residential area was one of many devastated by Andrew's passage. Today, only the street layout is comparable. This building was also affected by the storm.
Then came Hurricane Katrina's lesser known landfall in Florida in 2005 as a minimal hurricane. In August 2005, Tropical Storm Katrina formed over the Bahamas and began to intensify quickly before making landfall in Florida as a Category 1 hurricane, on the border between Miami-Dade and Broward counties. Despite the half a billion dollars in damages that Katrina had already caused, it still didn't really halt its progress. The radar imagery you're seeing right now shows how the worst of the storm was displaced towards the south of the center, though the whole region was affected with a total of 14 lives lost in the state. Of course, Katrina then proceeded into the Gulf of Mexico and exploded into a monster Category 5 storm. Just a few months later, the western side of Florida was struck by Major Hurricane Wilma. This is the view from near the southernmost point of Marco Island on the western coast of Florida, and it was in this direction you're looking at that Wilma came ashore from right to left as a Category 3 storm. The hurricane weakened slightly as it moved over land, only to re-intensify shortly after moving back over the Atlantic Ocean. As well as strong winds, a storm surge inundated the Florida Keys. In Florida alone, Wilma caused over $20 billion in damages. Some places haven't been touched since, like this building in Miami Beach. In the next part, we take a look at how the Philippines fared during 2009, and also Typhoon Haiyan. Hey guys, Force 15 here, endorsing Force 13 Cyclone Education Week. Press this subscribe button down here, and just do it, please. Um, and um, subscribe to Force 15 as well, which is located just here. So, so here, Force 13, Force 15. Well, thank you for that endorsement.